Hi, welcome to this session on map work. This just comes for 5 marks in a social science exam, but these 5 marks are literally in your hands. So you will be able to score these very easily. For that, you need to be aware a little about the geography of our country, about how, you know, the various ports in our country, the various major places in our country, you should be having a little bit of preliminary knowledge. And even if you perhaps don't have that much, even I am trying to learn every day about the geography of our nation, which is so vast, you know, before we think about other nations, let's think about this nation, this beautiful nation of ours, that's India, and how we can learn more about our country. And for that, it's very important that we know the various places in our country. So don't, when you when you study for math work, don't look at it as, oh, boring, oh, why do I have to go through all these uh, names now? This is a part of our nation. This is a part of what holds us together. So let us enjoy doing map work instead of despising it. So now we are going to be looking at each and every important map that uh, and uh, from where you might have questions coming up in your examination. So I hope you enjoy this video. Let's see which all are the important maps both from history as well as geography. So firstly, let's look at the map work for the history chapter nationalism in India. Very, very few places to mark over here. Firstly, you must remember the Indian National Congress sessions, the main ones that is after the, uh, after Gandhiji came to India from South Africa. So you need to remember that, right? Starting off with Calcutta, September 1920, then Nagpur in Maharashtra, that's December 1920, then, uh, Madras 1927, and of course Lahore in Pakistan, current Pakistan, that time it was in India only, that was 1929. So you need to remember these Congress sessions. Then we move to the important centers of the Indian national movement. Here you need to remember about uh, various incidents that took place. But first you need to remember about the various campaigns which were conducted by Mahatma Gandhi. Right? First one was of course the Champaran Satyagraha. That was the movement of indigo planters. Then we have the Ahmedabad and Kheda Satyagraha both in Gujarat. Then the Bardoli campaign. That's a no tax campaign. That was also in Gujarat. And then the Dandi March. That's a civil disobedience movement. It began the civil disobedience movement. Amritsar located in uh, Punjab, right? Chauri Chaura, where uh, the incident, the police incident took place over there. Um, and this led to Mahatma Gandhi calling off the non-cooperation movement. And, uh, you know, these are the ma major places that you need to mark uh, for the important centers of Indian national movement. Not much in history and I'm sure that it should be quite easy. Now let's move on. So to let's come to geography now. And in geography, as you all know, there are... Uh, uh, six types of soils that you need to remember and you need to remember where they are located in India. So starting off with forests and mountainous soil. Now this is primarily located in northern India. So you can see in the states of Jammu and Kashmir and also parts of Himachal Pradesh and uh, Uttarakhand as well. So this is where mountainous uh, forests are located. That's where, I mean, it's pretty natural, pretty obvious because that is where you find a lot of mountains. Now let's move on to alluvial soil which is located in the northern plains right so you can see here it extends from uh, states of Punjab then to the state of Uttar Pradesh mainly the state of Uttar Pradesh parts of Bihar parts of uh, it, it crosses Delhi as well and then of course parts of northeast as well so northeast belt parts of Assam are also covered in the alluvial soil then you have red and yellow soil which is covering uh, a large chunk of uh, the northern plains Lot of lot of part of here, the central highlands as well are being covered over here. Then you have in the south also a lot of part is being covered in the Deccan Plateau and also towards the northeast that is uh, right over here in states like Mizoram, Nagaland, all these states are being covered with red and yellow soil. Then we move on to uh, black soil which is primarily in the western belt. Uh, you can see here in states like Maharashtra and Gujarat and Madhya Pradesh, uh, these states are where cotton is primarily grown. So that's why it is black soil and uh, that's pretty easy. Then laterite soil is of course, where, uh, you, you would have learned that it's because of, it, it comes up, it comes up because of intense leaching and also excessive heat and rain, right? This is primarily in the Konkan, uh, Konkan belt right here and uh, also in uh, parts of Tamil Nadu and parts of uh, Gujarat 
right and madhya pradesh as well so it it covers like a large part of the country then arid is only in rajasthan that's where uh, in the uh, deserts right so that's in rajasthan primarily so that's that's all you need to learn in here, over here it's pretty simple so Let's i think you'll be able to come to the important to dams from your chapter 3 that is uh, water resources so here you need to remember a few very important dams so let's study each of them now salal dam project is located in uh, jammu and kashmir right then bhakra nangal dam is lo- is located in himachal pradesh tehri dam is located in uttarakhand rana pratap sagar located in rajasthan right towards its tip gandhi sagar is located in uh, madhya pradesh please don't mark it in gujarat or in rajasthan gandhi sagar is located in madhya pradesh sardar sarovar dam in gujarat uh, hirakud in orissa right nagarjuna sagar this is in andhra pradesh tungabhadra in karnataka so i hope you have understood all these dams as well right so i have given a short description i hope you understand my handwriting right so i have given a short description of all these dams where they are located so, so now let's look at you. where various crops are grown across the country and for that you need to just memorize two to three places for each crop starting off with jute now jute is mainly concentrated in the uh, eastern belt now that there you can remember three states that is west bengal bihar and sikkim so west bengal right over here bihar right over here sikkim right over here these are the three places you remember for jute moving on to cotton now for cotton you will remember again uh, this is in the black soil belt so you will remember maharashtra gujarat and madhya pradesh then going to rubber which is concentrated primarily in the southern states so you remember here uh, for uh, rubber you can take consideration karnataka and uh, kerala and tamil nadu these three states for rubber then sugarcane now sugarcane is both in the western as well as in the uh, northern plains so remember Ma- uh, maharashtra right then uttar pradesh and also haryana so these three states you can remember for uh, sugarcane then coming to tea now tea you all would have heard about uh, the plantations right now this is mainly in you find tea in andhra pradesh right and also in assam there are two main places and some are also found in west bengal right so these three states you can remember for tea and for coffee now coffee is grown in uh, the southern states once again this is in karnataka uh, and also in Kerala and Tamil Nadu. So, the southern states you can grow coffee over there. That's why coffee is so famous in the southern states. So, if you use a bit, little bit of logic, and if you apply yourself a little, remembering these places. Now, let's look at the major difficult. iron ore mines in India. So, now we'll start off with Mayur Bhanj, which is located in Orissa, right? Then we move on to Durg and Bailadila, which are located in Chhattisgarh, and then we come to uh, Bellary, Bellary and Kudremuk. which are located in karnataka this is pretty easy to remember right because usually in two states you find these major iron ore mines all right, right? now okay. look at let's look at the various mica mines okay and also the bauxite deposits but mica mines are extremely important so lay some more stress over there that is ajmer and beaver located in rajasthan right gaya uh, gaya located in bihar hazaribagh located in jharkhand and nellore located in Andhra Pradesh, right? These are the regions you need you need to remember. Bauxite deposits, you can have a cursory look through them. Katni located in Madhya Pradesh, right? Mycal Hills, this is somewhere in between Chhattisgarh and Maharashtra. Then uh, Bilaspur and Koraput, right? These you should remember. I see bauxite deposits, right? But mica mines, remembering them. So is now important. let us look at the various coal fields and mines, right? So starting off with Rani Ganj. Located in uh, West Bengal, right here, Rani Ganj. Then we move on to Jharia and Bokaro, located in Jharkhand. Then we move on to Talcher, located in Orissa. Then Korba, located in Chhattisgarh. And here we have Singarauli in Ch- uh, in Madhya Pradesh. And also remember, uh, Singareni and Singarauli. There's a difference here. So Singareni is in Telangana. Remember, Singareni is not in Andhra Pradesh. It's in Telangana. and eighth one is naveli located in tamil nadu so i hope you have got all the coal finds and mines right now right we should now. look at the major oil fields and let's start off with digboy and naharkatia in assam there right uh, in the north east right in assam both of them are located in assam then we have uh, mumbai high and basian located a little away from mumbai in the uh, arabian sea right okay a little away from the port over there and then of course we have kalol and ankleshwar right towards the end of uh, gujarat as well so these are the six 
oil fields that you need to remember. Now right? we shall All look right. at the thermal power stations. A very vast list indeed, but let's look at it one by one. Starting off with Namrup in Assam, right over here. Then you have Talcher in Orissa, as we looked at before also. Then Singarauli in MP, right? Then Hardwa Ganj in UP, right over here. Korba in Chhattisgarh. Uran in Maharashtra. Rama, uh, Ramagundam in Telangana, right over here, 7. 8 is Vijayawada, which is again located in uh, Andhra Pradesh, right? Tutikorin located in Tamil Nadu. Uh, Dhuvaram also, now this is located up here in Gujarat. Dhuvaram is in Gujarat. Neveli and Innor both located in Tamil Nadu. So I hope you got all the thermal power now, stations. This is a very important map, right? Here you are locating the nuclear power plants and here you need to remember all of them very well. First one is Narora which is located in UP. Second one is Rawat Bhatta located in Rajasthan. Third is Kakrapara. Remember Kakra and do it, right? Kakrapara located in Gujarat. Four is Tarapur located in Maharashtra. Five is Kaiga located in Karnataka. And six is Kalpakkam located in Tamil Nadu, right? So these are the major nuclear now, the major stations. cotton textile industries, these are cities you would have heard about. I'm sure you would have heard about these uh, cities that are pretty much prevalent. You would have read newspapers, you would have uh, heard about them, right? Mumbai, of course, in Maharashtra. Indore in uh, Madhya Pradesh. Ahmedabad in Gujarat. Surat in Gujarat. Uh, Kanpur is in uh, Uttar Pradesh, Coimbatore and Madurai, both of them are located in Tamil Nadu. So cotton textile industries, these are where these industries flourish. Right? Now let's look at the various woolen industries. Uh, again, very easy, Srinagar in Jammu and Kashmir, Amritsar and Ludhiana in Punjab, Panipat is uh, in Haryana, Mirzapur is in Uttar Pradesh and Jamnagar is in Gujarat. So these are the six places that you must remember for woolen industries, right? Okay, then the major silk industries will come to that now. Anantnag, it's been in news uh, for uh, and since a few days. So Anantnag is located in JNK. So is Srinagar, of course, the capital. Then Murshidabad located in West Bengal and Mysore in Karnataka, right? This is also a very important map. The various iron and steel industries, right? Starting off with Burnpur and Durgapur located in West Bengal. I'm sure that that is something Durga, when you hear the name, it will be associated with West Bengal. So one and two. Uh, it's in West Bengal, right? Then coming to Bokaro, located in Jharkhand. Jamshedpur, of course, located in Jharkhand. Raurkela, located in Orissa. Bilai, located in Chhattisgarh. Vijayanagar, located in Karnataka. Bhadravati, also located in Karnataka. Salem, located in Tamil Nadu. And Vishakapatnam, of course, located in Andhra Pradesh. So this is a very important map. So uh, most of it, if you go to see, is uh, in the southern region or in the eastern region as you move to move away from the northeast you, you encounter these uh, iron and steel industries right but most of them concentrate around the Chhattisgarh and the Jharkhand that belt that belt is actually very very productive for its iron and steel now output. there are 15 software technology parks given over here I'm sure you would have heard of all of them um, you would have heard of them sometime or the other perhaps you would have visited these places as well so I don't need to go into details I'm sure for this one now let's come to the more important one, National Highway Developmental Projects. So for this, uh, here you need to remember the North-South and the East-West Corridor. The North-South Corridor, this is, these both are part of the Golden Quadrilateral, right? So the North-South Corridor links Srinagar in the North to uh, Kanyakumari, that's in the South, right, deep South. The East-West Corridor is from Silcher, that's in Assam to Porbandar that's in Gujarat, right? So this you need to remember in the Golden Quadrilateral or the National, uh, in general the National Highway Development. This process. is also an important map. This is about the seaport. So here you need to remember first about Kandla located in Gujarat, Marma Gao located in uh, Goa, yes, it's here. Uh, then you need to remember about Tutikorin located in Tamil Nadu in the south, Paradeep located in Orissa, Right, Mumbai, you all know, right over here. New Mangalore, now this is in Karnataka, here. Then you have Chennai, that is located over here, right. Then Haldia, now Haldia is a port perhaps. If you have gone to West Bengal, you would have heard of it. That's located in, here in West Bengal, right. Then you have Jawaharlal Nehru port that is located in Mumbai once again. It's right over here, right. Kochi, Kochi is in Kerala. Vishakapatnam in Andhra Pradesh and finally Kolkata that's the capital of 
West Bengal. So these are the 12 places you need to remember for the major seaports in our country. And finally, the major airports in our country, right? The international airports of our country. Starting off with Amritsar, that's Rajasthan International Airport, Indira Gandhi International Airport of Delhi, then uh, Ahmedabad, Sadar Wala Bhai Patel Airport, Kolkata, Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose Airport, Chhatrapati Shivaji Airport in Mumbai, Hyderabad, Rajiv Gandhi International Airport, Chennai, Minam Bakam International Airport, Thiruvananthapuram, Nedim Bacheri International Airport. So these are the airports that you need to remember. And it's pretty easy because if you go by the names, you'll be able to understand uh, where is that located, in which city it is located. And I'm sure if you would have traveled a little, you would have uh, perhaps gone to these airports as well. So this is about the last one that is about the airports in our country, the international airports in our country. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that all these maps that I've given have really helped you out and uh, they will be a great revision for you before you go to give your exam. But should I conclude saying something? I have to say something in conclusion. So we will conclusion with map. Ke hi karein. Confused? No, don't be confused at all. Because in conclusion, I will give you another acronym. And that is MAP map only. Starting off with M which is uh, managing your time effectively. So, अपना सिर्फ पांच या दस मिनट से ज़्यादा मत लगाओ मैप में बहुत इजी है जल्दी हो जाएगा या तो आपको आईडेंटिफाई करना पड़ेगा या तो आपको लोकेट करना पड़ेगा तो बहुत इजी है आपका पांच से दस मिनट में हो जाना चाहिए शुद्ध फोकस मोर ऑन है फाइव मार्कर्स राइट फाइव मार्कर्स थ्री मार्कर्स बहुत ज़्यादा इम्पोर्टेंट है ये या तो आप एंड में करो या तो अगर आप सोच रहे हो कि थोड़ा टाइम कम पड़ रहा है जल्दी से ये खत्म करके अपने बीच में पेपर के बीच में अटैच करो डोंट अटैच इट टुवर्ड्स दी एंड राइट दैट्स द फर्स्ट थिंग देन ए स्टैंड्स फॉर एक्यूरेसी जितना एक्यूरेट हो सके उतना मार्क कीजिए ठीक है आई अंडरस्टैंड कि समटाइम्स बॉर्डर में होता है या फिर थोड़ा इधर उधर होता है इट्स फाइन कभी कभार हो जाता है लेकिन जितना एक्यूरेट हो सकते हो उतना करने की कोशिश करो एंड फाइनली पी दैट इज Try and mark with a pencil. Always better, right? Instead of making with a pen and then cutting if you have made done it wrong. Pencil से लिखिए और अच्छी तरह mark कीजिए और थोड़ा legible बनाइए, ठीक है? मेरे आपने देखे होंगे तो illegible होगी, वो क्योंकि मैंने book में किया, ठीक है? But you all make it as you know wonderful as possible. So thank you so much. Wishing you all best of luck for your examination. Do like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.